Tell us what you've done and why. Well, we haven't, we haven't uh, changed the, the fundamentals of our economy just because you don't change the fundamentals of an economy uh, from one day to another because that yes. would be very messy. Yes. Even if you do things right, it would be messy and you don't want mess, right? Yeah. You want things to grow, you want the economy to grow, you want people to be uh, happy, you don't want people to, you know, uh, the economy to do well, you want your country to do well. So we, we're we doing small steps to change some things and to give uh, people different options. We're not uh, changing everything right away, but we're giving people different options. So we made Bitcoin legal tender. We're the only country in the world that, where Bitcoin is legal tender. I mean, Bitcoin is used all over the world, even in countries where, it's, where, where it is banned, just because you can't ban it. I mean, it's, it's uncensorable. You can't, even if you want to censor it, you can't. Yes. Uh, but, but the only country in the world where, where Bitcoin has legal tender is El Salvador that gives us an advantage in the new, uh, in the new economic system that's, that's in the works. And we, we have uh, had some uh, benefits from it. We just, we have increased tourism by 95%. And that's in, in, the part, in part because of Bitcoin. There's you know, a lot of Bitcoiners that want to go to the only country that where Bitcoin is legal tender, we have Bitcoin conferences, et cetera. So we, we're getting a lot of uh, tourism for it. We're getting a lot of private investment also because there are some people escaping, you know, the censorship or they're trying to escape the, the laws, trying to ban uh, this new technology. So they go into, into countries that are more open to these technologies. And of course, they would go to a country that is not only open, but has actually embraced uh, the currency as its own. So we get a lot of investment, we'll get a lot of tourism, and the other thing we, ha we get is that uh, we get some rebranding. Because El Salvador, if a lot of people don't know anything about El Salvador, but if some people know something about El Salvador, it would be bad things like MS-13, yes. right? Or the, or the civil war in the 80s. Of course. But if you're, you know, if, if you're a Bitcoiner, or if you're into, into, you know, into technology or into you know, into new economic systems or into un unconfiscable wealth, then you will listen and you will learn about El Salvador in a different light. We're, um, we have a project of building a new city. We're, uh, we're uh, mining Bitcoin with the power of volcanoes. So these this types of things are not only uh, projects that are very important for the development of our country, but they are also a rebrand. It's also a rebranding. A rebranding that will probably cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and yeah. for us it will cost nothing because it's just you know making bold and and you know uh, good decisions, and people will people will like them. So people will like them, but then I mean our current economic system has a lot of stakeholders. Oh, they hate it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they hate it. Who hates? Part of it, I think, part of it is staying safe. I mean, we, we never know. God knows. I mean, what will happen? But part of us staying safe is come out in public and say the things. Yes. It's, you know, it's harder. I mean, they, they have done it before with m a lot more important people, so they can do it, of course. But you know, they, have, they have many enemies, not one. They have a lot of people calling these things out. You know, they, have, they have been censoring all of these people because it's easier to censor than just go and eliminate every you know, uh, person saying... Uh, bad things about them, it's too hard. They cannot, you know. They, so uh, a, a part of staying safe, I think, is going, going public, being transparent and being, you know, s say the things that you know and you want to say and that, that you think that they must be said. And, I mean, they, have, they haven't done anything to you. And that's because, you know, you're, you're saying the things you want to say. And, and it, it, would be, it would be too expensive for them, for them, they, 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 it's, it's more, it's more, it's cheaper for them to smear you, to say yeah. bad things about you, to have people think that you're a bad person, which you are not, but it's easier for them to do those things. Go and straight and eliminate you, that would be, you know, too messy. And it would probably be against their own plans. So I, I really think one way to stay safe is being true to yourself and saying the things out loud so people can you know, listen to them, make their own decisions about it, and know what you stand for. So it would be a, a little more expensive 
for them to eliminate all the position in front. <laughs> they have to kill know. a lot of people. Exactly. Last obvious question, but since we do have so many Salvadorans living in this country, um, how, ma how, many, how many Salvadorans live in the U.S., do you think? 2.5 million. 2.5 million. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, and they, at least according to the polls, agree with you. Yes. Yeah. That's really interesting. Like, how did we miss that? How do we miss that all these, at least speaking for myself, I agree with you. So I didn't realize that we had millions of Salvadorans here, legally and illegally, who agree with you and me. Like, yes. when did that happen? Well, I think, you know, there, there, are, there are things that probably some Salvadorans we don't, won't agree with you or me. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, there's fundamental human values that are universal. And there's, there's, there's a reason why they, why they are universal. If you're a believer, you would say God. I would say God myself. If you're not a believer, you would say nature, you, the universe, you know, the, the order of things. So they are things that are universal. And these concepts that are logical, universal, they have been like that all of, you know, for all of civilization. They, uh, there's a huge, I mean, the system or the, the ones in power they want to change that. They want to change these universal concepts that are very strong within everybody. So even though you know a Catholic might be might think different than an evangelical Christian, for example, they will have some of the same principles within them, themselves. You know, like you, know, you pay your debts, you take care of your neighbor, you, you know, you you care for your family, you protect your family, you know, you raise your kids. There's some fundamental values that are very important. You protect your wealth. Your saving is good. You know, we can go on for hours. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's funda very fundamental values, like stealing is bad. Killing is bad. You know, uh, raping a child is bad. But, you know, there's, there's even, you know, movements about that. So with those fundamental values that are so dear to most of the people in the world being under attack by the elites, a lot of people are saying, hey, this guy, he's in a very good position, but he's not a member of the elites. Actually, the elites hate him, your case, right? And he's saying the truth. He's saying the things I believe are true. So I agree with him. So... Sometimes you would, you would find support or, or people that agree with you in places you don't expect it, just because they, we are all human beings and we all have the same values. Amen. If not all of the economic publications, you, know, you, you name it, you know, Bloomberg, uh, CNBC, Financial Times, Forbes, you know, they, we have got a lot, of, you know, a lot of bad press and you know, fake news and FUD, like... FUD, like you know, Bitcoiners call it, uh, from, from these uh, financial publications, they will print lies. But you know, there's, there's, there's something special about lies is that they don't last for long. They don't last long. So when people realize that these things don't make any sense and, or they see from themselves the difference, like you, for example, you have gone three times to a Sabler in different, yes. you know, in different times. And so they, they, they see things in a, into a different light and they, they see reality. So, you know, reality always in, uh, imposes itself over, over lies just because it's real. So it's, it's, it's easier to uphold it or it's easier to, to show it or to demonstrate it's, it's, it's true. So we are, uh, we, we're taking some heat. But if, but if, you, if, if you look a little back... <laughs> Es el poder transformador de la palabra de Dios. No necesita usted este, este reconocimiento, pero es un honor para nosotros acercárselo y nombrarlo hijo distinguidísimo de la ciudad de San Salvador.
que tanto en oración como la de todo este pueblo seguirá siendo a favor de ustedes. Creemos que estamos convencidos que el que ustedes dirijan en este país también es por decisión de Dios, porque así nos lo dice la Escritura, que todas las autoridades que se han establecido por Dios han sido establecidas. Y deseamos que Dios los siga ayudando y que Dios siga dirigiendo bien sus pasos, pero que creemos que todas las decisiones que ustedes tomen son siempre en favor de esta ciudad. El reconocimiento. They didn't care about us before. So right now, yes, we do have bad publications in Forbes and Financial Times, but they weren't writing about El Salvador before. It's not like we lose anything. So, and there's other publications writing interesting stories about El Salvador. We, there, some guy just, this is a joke, of course, it's not, it's not, but he just said El Salvador has the most documentaries per capita. Because we're, there, there's a lot of people doing documentaries about Bitcoin adoption, about surf, uh, because you have a lot of gr great surfing in El Salvador. So they have a lot of security measures we're, imp we're implementing against MS-13. So it, we're getting a lot, of, a lot of good press, and we're getting bad press too, but the guys printing the bad press didn't write anything about El Salvador before, so it's not that we're losing their audiences, and also their audiences are diminishing. Right. Because they're, they're, they're not even, not, it's not even close. They're, they're not as important as they used to be. They're actually almost irrelevant, but they have their legacy names. But who buys uh, a Time magazine anymore? And, and we, I mean, I, I don't know anybody. But you know, before, it was a very important thing in a, in a kiosk to buy you know, a, a Newsweek or a Time magazine. But now, who, who buys a magazine anymore? Who subscribes to a magazine online? Nobody. I mean, it's, it's really, it's just really uh, names, legacy names, yes. and, their, and their Twitter accounts. So it's... It's not really, you know, it's, they're not really mainstream media anymore. They're just, you know, they're just accounts in social media with a legacy name of being mainstream media. And you don't seem to care what they say. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I have learned not to care. But of course, at the beginning, I do care. I, I did care because for me, I thought they were important. Now that I see they aren't. And since they are not treating us that well, I, I've learned not to care. And I think it's better because this, uh, and if you look at the ratings, for example, and the amount of subscribers they have, it's really ridiculous. I mean, they, I mean nobody's watching them. Really, no, nobody watches CNN anymore. It's like, I was, I, I was, we were talking yesterday about in El Salvador, we have uh, this news show, of course, news shows, of course, local. And the, uh, news, um, the, uh, the, the, the news show. In, uh, like nightly news? Yeah, the nightly news, the main nightly news, local nightly news. Channel 4? Yeah, Channel 4. They have like 1 million viewers every night. Out of 7 million uh, people in, live, that live in El Salvador, uh, that live in El Salvador, we have 1 million viewers, which is not much. We, you know, 14% of the population is watching. And then CNN, at, in prime time, we have like half a million viewers. So channel, <laughs> channel 4, back in El Salvador, has twice the, the ratings of CNN in the whole United States with 300 million people. So, I mean... Who cares? It, does, it doesn't make any sense for them to be airing their shows anymore. I mean, it's... The, <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you think they do? Well, because they, they're still sponsors that think, that think they, you know, that, that, that people, is, people are watching. It's like, I don't know, probably, you know, uh, uh, senior uh, citizen uh, products that, you know, they think that they're, 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 um, the people in charge of their marketing, they think that people still watch CNN because they watched CNN before. And probably they're not even watching CNN anymore. So, I mean, they're just airing this thing. And they will, I mean, they will come up to census and say, okay, let's stop airing this. It, it happens with some magazines and some publications. They yes. just stop printing and they go online. Is their way of saying, okay, we know nobody's buying the magazine anymore. So it will happen. So with, CNN will become a Twitter account. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it will probably become a, a online 
broadcasting before, but you know, we know it failed with CNN Plus, so it will, you know, it will become a Twitter account. Yeah. So one thing we were talking about yesterday that I, I, I didn't fully understand, you have said, as someone who lives outside the United States and been to a lot of places, that the tone and worldview, the perspective of American media I think there were a lot of different things that President Trump did for the country. 